distance. Sure, they move things from point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the cost, but your cool rail riding friends called you a whack ass and it really hurt oh, your no. feelings. Well, have we got the invention for you? The Impulsoria uses an ingenious system of treadmills to turn. <laughs> How's it going people? Jack here with another video. So today I am hopping straight back into the Salmonella rabbit hole and discovering some stuff on uh, the obscure and well, obsolete inventions of the past. If you watch enough videos on the channel, you know that I'm a sucker for like sometimes useless information, but at times that come pretty handy. It's always nice to learn or broaden your horizon a lot of topics. It sometimes makes for better conversation or a time can actually aid you in important stuff but this is right up my alleyway so let's jump into it all right after months upon months of unrelenting pressure by you psychopaths pretending to be my characters on twitter i finally got a <laughs> merch store let this be a lesson kids with enough harassment you can achieve anything anyway go check it out or don't whatever well that's one lesson to learn kids please do not harass people <laughs> Hey kids, if I learned anything from my middle school career, it's that what may seem like a good idea initially will often be remembered only as a foolish mistake. Here's a few pieces yeah. of technology from yesteryear oh, that have since fallen into discs. total obscurity. So I've always believed that there's no point in having many small things when you can have one big thing. Why have many shrimp when you can have one lobster? Why drink okay. many glasses of milk when you can eat one udder? Why have many cheese its when you can have one cheese them? Patent pending. And why have many street lights when you can have one moonlight Tower. These guys were real popular oh, yeah. back in the 1880s and 90s, movies often sometimes. standing at over 150 feet tall and illuminating several blocks from a single point. Not very well, mind you. No. Matter of fact, they were so dim, we name. didn't even have the conscience to just call them light towers. Had to go and stick the moon on the front so people didn't get their hopes up. But thanks to our good old friend, the inverse square law, you still needed a fuck ton of light to pull this off. So they used incredibly harsh and UV-emitting arc lights instead of incandescent oh, bulbs. Boy. All the light of the moon and all the vision damage of the sun? Talk about a win-win. Sadly, these beasts have fallen by the wayside over the past century or so. Except for in Austin, apparently. But they use friendlier mercury vapor lamps in them, so they only get half points. Okay, hold on. Um... Sure. I just had to, to remind myself a little something. Because arc lights weren't that powerful, as he mentioned, but those were pretty freaking big. Like, one of those light spot that you see there was pro probably weighing like 200 pounds or, or around 100 kilos and you, you know the whole um light camera action thing yeah, because at the time they would use lights like these to film them but usually they were having carbon in them so which is fine it, but it only lasted for a certain amount of time so you had to have your camera ready to go and not only that changing the carbon rod was the issue and then when you have mercury vapor that's why i reacted that way but i'm imagining that a lot of these inventions are going to be like um, end of 19th to beginning of 20th century because i actually let me show you something i have from some of the books that are behind me are not just some that are modern. There's one here on physics, the one that I had in university, yeah, introductory book. But uh, this one is an old collection of stuff uh, released from the 1930. Got this from my dad. It holds a lot of uh, fun stuff and knowledge of the past. Some stuff about mermaids, <laughs> views on them. Well, the book is in Danish, but um, different stuff on inventions especially. And by the end of the 19th century, things start turning weird. Like weird as inventions start making their wave into things. Like some of those that apply especially to like personal lifestyle stuff, right? And we're talking things that take care of your children, uh, like razor machines, like Bruh. assembly lines, razor machines that you could find at your barber shop. And it only got weirder as time went along. But just to point out that uh, although we're seeing a lot of weird inventions being made today that we've deemed to be completely unnecessary, 
The past was even weirder. Now, anyone who's been around a baby long enough knows they always have a cloud of ghoulish stench hovering around them. Jeez yep. Louise, somebody better air out that musty little muskrat before Grandma starts drooping again. You could stick him on the clothesline for a while, but knowing that little moron, I'm sure he'd find a way to hurt himself somehow. <laughs> Introducing the baby cage. Oh, Finally, city dwellers yeah. all across the nation have a way of unleashing their postnatal funk on the unsuspecting passerby below. Uh. These were in vogue for a while before falling out of style a bit of the way into the 20th century because apparently society started deeming babies more valuable than air conditioner yeah yes that's messed up and this of course was another thing with the old industrialization of cities um, to, to give them fresh air not stay inside <laughs> uh, no the street were polluted as fuck I don't really get it personally, but this is also around the time we started putting lead in gasoline, so it's probably for the best we kept them inside all day. Matter yeah. of fact, it's my firm belief that without kids growing up breathing lead, there's no way pet rocks would have taken off in this. <laughs> wow, alienating baby boomers. He's so brave and controversial. That's now, in the days between the Great rock. War. True. We forget about that, right? Children today making their TikTok challenges. It cooking chicken with Tylenol and eating Tide Pod, but we had pet rocks. Yo, Sammy, catch my Pokemon! Stoning kids for no reason. Now, in the days between the Great War and the not as great but still pretty alright war, people were trying to find efficient means of detecting an incoming air attack. They climbed their nation's tallest mountains to seek the wisdom of their greatest elders, and the wise okay. man said, hmm, big ears. So that's what they did. These giant discs were known what? as acoustic mirrors and were designed to focus incoming sound over a five meter diameter into a single point. They were that's reasonably smart. effective as listening devices. A few of them in Britain were able like to pick satellite. up the sound of a plane from all the way across the English Channel. Of course, radar came along soon after, rendering these things completely useless beyond looking brutalist as hell. For real, instant album cover material right here. Yeah. Ah! One of the pet boys is pulling his- Oh. But just to the point of uh, the the death from before, this is how conspiracy theories are born. Like, when I had to watch some, when I had to see something like this, I would think to myself, okay, this may have been like a satellite or something. Like, who constructed this? For what purpose? It's not to serve water, so it has something to do with air. But I'm imagining that if somebody randomly came across this, it would be like, aliens. That's aliens for sure. Real instant album cover material right here. Ah! One of the pet boys is pulling a Spanish Inquisition on this poor wayward This thing harlot. is based on huh, phrenology. Just kidding. Despite the fact that this looks so very, very much like a state-of-the-art instrument of torture, it's actually just a beauty micrometer. Think those yep. shoe size measure things at Foot Locker, only instead of one primitive measurement, it records the entire topology of your face and skull at once. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. With this data, a trained cosmetologist would be able to pinpoint exactly what features of your head should be enhanced and reduced with makeup in order to achieve a maximum calculated attractiveness after you've paid for their services. Clearly this device must have been effective. After all, beauty is entirely objective. What, I of the beholder? <laughs> Check the name tag, buddy. <laughs> Apparently, though, women didn't like being strapped into a birdcage and having their every minute flaw meticulously laid out in front of them, so this thing never really took off in the end. Next, we have the Humlauf. This was a device made during <laughs> World War II designed to let infantry shoot around corners. It's like the Germans Stupid. sat down and watched that part in Tom and Jerry where the conniving rat bends the gun barrel back at his adversary. They said, Mein Gott. They came in a variety <laughs> of angles between 30 and 90 degrees, and even came with a little periscope so you could see what you were shooting at. But as we all come to find out when we reach adolescence, cartoons are the arbiters of deceit, because these things would invariably break within the first couple hundred shots or so. And even Don't when they say. did work, the rounds would fucking explode from the massive acceleration, turning a deadly bullet into an ineffectual spray of shrapnel. These were so ineffective that only the 30 degree model ever saw significant production beyond prototypes, and even that was very limited. Say, you ever look at regular mouse traps and go, hmm, not enough property damage? Well check this out. Patented in 1882, it's the revolver mouse trap, brought to you by the makers of the snail trebuchet. What? And the cockroach claymore. Thanks to the. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? The gun is fun, but of course he. I, I would invest money on the cockroach claymore. But who, in hell, just woke up one day and chose violence? <laughs> that mouse has got to die in the most brutal way possible. Let me just strap my revolver onto this trap. 
the marvels of the modern era. All those tiresome hours of intense varmint slang can be outsourced to one little gadget on the floor of your kid's playroom. Now when you hear a gunshot in the middle of the night, you can rest easy knowing that, one way or the other, there's one less pest for you to deal with in the morning. Boom. 1850. Mm. Steam locomotives are all the rage. You're in the transport business, but all you can afford is a couple dumb horses. Sure, they move things from point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the cost, but your cool rail riding friends called you a whack-ass and it really hurt oh, your no. feelings. Well, have we got the invention for you. The Impulsoria uses an ingenious system of treadmills to turn... <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Okay, so a horse can have an output up up until 15 horsepower, right? Yes, it makes it strange that they actually decided to use one horsepower as the unit. But nevertheless, 15 horsepower, that translates to around 10, 11 kilowatt hours. Well, at least kilowatts, let's keep it at that. And if you can keep it for an hour, great. But 11 kilowatts, and then you have, what do we have here on the picture? Four of them, so 44 horsepower, running on a treadmill that is going to drive these things down the rails. Listen, your average team locomotive could have an output of like 3,000 kilo kilowatts. Who in the sound mind was so petty? that they just said, fuck science, I'm gonna do better science that is just worse. How? Turn that horse to be beckoned into a force to be reckoned with. Sure, it's expensive as hell to make and limits your services entirely to railroads, but just look at it. Instant pussymobile. Slap some rims and a spoiler on that, you're laughing. This machine is recorded at having a maximum output of two to four horsepower, which sounds about right, and it didn't. Come on see much use outside a couple exhibitions. Now, if there's one hobby that people- It's even worse than enjoy, I thought. It's smoking. Who boy, did they like smoking. And with every great wholesome activity comes a million novelty items to go along with it. Everyone's seen the long cigarette, but how about the really long cigarette? Want to smoke in the rain? Here you go. Going snorkeling? Hey, you know what's more important than oxygen? Nicotine. But hey, want to know the only thing better than a cigarette? Two cigarettes. You know what, fuck it. Have the whole pack. You earned it. Of course, if you're trying to cut back, you can always share it with a friend. Aw, how heartburning. But yeah, I talked about that during the Internet Historian video on the, the last part with Art, with uh, Monk, the, the Scream. But I, I believe that I brought that in contrast to the fact that at the time that he made that painting, he and many other artists were going through this movement of uh, rebelling against the, uh, the rich elite because they were the ones who had access to all <laughs> narcotics, but to smokes. So it, doing that meant that they were like on equal footing and then of course that whole movement took off and became like a trendy thing to do. But you know it's even more fun than addiction. High quality documentaries. That's why you should check out Curiosity Stream. From the face behind the Discovery Channel, Curiosity Stream lets you stuff your little meatuses full of all the bizarre knowledge the world has to offer. And with over 2400 titles, there's no way there isn't something that interests you here. Remember Secret Life of Pets? Trash movie. Turgid prose, <laughs> stilted dialogue, pandering humor, and above all, highly unrealistic. On the other hand, the secret life of dogs is an absolute treasure. Nice. Did you know they turn their tongues into weird inside-out ladles when they drink? Just one of the many fun facts found inside. Normally, yeah. full access to Curiosity Stream only costs $2.99 a month or $20 a year, which is nothing. That's like a McDonald's run every four months. But if you still have your doubts, you can get 30 days free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the sign-up process. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and check out this JPEG. Oh! Uh, you ain't from Delaware if you've never had these. Those are what? What are they called? Lucky Charms, out of a pickle. Yeah, Rick and Morty fans may be uh, fans of this, but I ain't. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Who eats this? Anyway, folks. Uh, yeah, that was a fun video, and uh, yeah, maybe spewed a little bit too many facts from my own there, but it was uh, it was fun to to go through some old inventions and talk about them a bit. But thank you for watching the video. As always, if you liked it, give the video a like. Please do go and subscribe to Sam Another. Definitely, we'll be checking out more stuff from him. And that said, though, we should all have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.